My name is Sarah and my Darren is in British Army and a fine piece of ass. This week, there's been a lot of conscription talk in the UK and this really pisses on the chips of the hundreds of forces personnel who've signed off or are thinking of leaving. Retention is at an all-time low, so maybe mentioning conscription is a cunning plan to say, you may as well stay in, fella, because you'll be back in a few months anyway. Former UK Defence Secretary Michael Fallon said it was time to think the unthinkable and consider conscription. An anathema to most professional soldiers. 18 to 41 year olds everywhere are googling who would be exempt. The medically unfit does not include anyone with a serious Greg's habit and key industries does not include most people who consider themselves key workers. No amount of blue sky thinking will exempt a project manager or a social media influencer or actors or executive assistants or company commanders. Clergymen and women are exempt, except for you, Padre, you're in. You could pretend you're mentally unfit, but most regular soldiers already are, so good luck with that one. In fact, you'd probably end up getting fast-tracked to the paras. I'm not sure what the pay is for conscripts, but for many, it'll be better than their lifetime supply of job seekers' allowance. Congratulations on finally getting a job. Conscripts won't be entitled to an SFA, so Pinnacle can stop sweating. There's not enough to go around as it is. Interestingly, Section 23 of the Civil Contingencies Act 2004 precludes the government from using the Act to make emergency regulations that requires a person to provide military service. There was no real threat from Russia in 2004, though, and laws can be changed and manipulated to fit the agenda. In 2009, Sir Michael Caine, veteran, called for the reintroduction of national service to give young people a sense of belonging rather than a sense of violence. And he has a good point. The British Army, this is belonging.